Hi everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. The next page in our taco manual brings us to a regional specialty that's all about fresh cheese in roasted tomatillo salsa, green salsa. And I've got a lot to say about the fresh cheese to make it absolutely easy and doable for you. Um, but the first thing I want to do is get started to make the roasted tomatillo salsa. Um, I've got four tomatillos here, big tomatillos. Um, you first, of course, have to take that papery husk off. You could rinse off the little stickiness that's on the outside. I've got three cloves of garlic, but they're still in their papery skins. Uh, one serrano chili here or a small jalapeno would work with the stem off of it. And alongside that, I'm gonna roast some red onion. And I wanna do that in pretty thick, um, thick slices here. So I'm gonna cut this basically into four rounds. Keeping it in rounds like this will definitely help with the moving around and turning over and stuff like that, rather than doing it in half moons where they would kind of fall apart. And in typical Mexican style, we're gonna dry roast all of this rather than put some oil on it before we roast it. So I've got my broiler here heated and I've got the shelf at the highest level, about four inches away from the heating element. And I'm gonna just slide this in. It's going to take about six minutes per side. Um, so we'll look at it and look and see how much blotchy black there is on stuff because we want a, a good amount of that, but we also want to cook everything all the way through. But getting that little bit of char on that really, really gives you a lot more flavor. Now let's talk fresh cheese. So in Mexico, there's two kinds of fresh cheese that people talk about all the time. The most common one is queso fresco or fresh, fresh cheese. And I've got this one here. This comes from a local uh, V&V Supremo uh, cheese company here in Chicago. And I think it's a really, really good quality queso fresco. But there are many, many different ones out there. And to tell you the truth, they all sort of taste the same. Now over here is one that's less common, but you can certainly find it here in the United States. This is a panela cheese, and it's got a very different texture. Now the fresco cheese, when you cut a little piece of that off, um, you'll notice that it's curdy and it's easy to, to crumble between your fingers like that. So this is a garnishing cheese. It's kind of salty, and when you taste it, uh, the, the flavor of it is like capturing fresh milk. That's what you want. There's a little bit of acidity there. There's a nice amount of salt, but it's used to give a freshness to a finished dish. Very common in the Mexican uh, types of antojitos, the things that are like the, the fried, rolled fried tacos, any kind of a sope on tacos, all kinds of things like that. Now, the panela cheese is made in a similar fashion to the queso fresco, but instead of crumbling up the curd so that before it's packed like this, so that it will easily crumble when you run it between your fingers, the curd in this one is put into a basket. You can even see the, the little indentions, indentations of the basket here. And you can't really crumble this one at all. It doesn't want to crumble in that same way. And again, when you taste it, it's going to have a light milky kind of flavor, but a little bit more of a spongy texture where this is quite dense. Now, you can, you can fry either one of these, and that's what we're going to do here. You can fry either one because they do not melt. These fresh cheeses do not melt because of the way that they're, they're made. So what I'm going to use here, I've cut about half inch squares, um, half the panela cheese, which will give us a little bit lighter texture, and half of the queso fresco, which will give us a little bit denser, but at the same time sort of softening texture that is absolutely delicious. So you've got to try this because you've got to get that texture. And enveloping all of that in salsa verde is really beautiful because fresh, milky cheese and the tanginess of salsa verde is just like a match made in heaven. Okay, so I'm going to meet you back here once the ingredients for the salsa verde and the onions have been fully roasted. 
Okay, I want to show you this, what, we, what we've got here. So these tomatillos are looking really good now because they've got some splotchy dark spots on them. I wouldn't mind them being a little bit darker than that um, because it adds more flavor. That darkness adds flavor. Um, but we're doing okay here. You can see that the little serrano chili is blistered and blackened on one side. The same thing goes for these little um, garlic cloves here. Um, our onion's not doing as well as what I was hoping it would do for this. So we're going to just leave it on that side for another few minutes. Um, in about three or four minutes, I will look back in here because my guess is that that serrano chili is going to be ready and perhaps those garlic cloves will be ready as well. Everything for the salsa is ready. I let it cool down just a little bit to tell you the truth. I did put the onions back in a little bit longer than everything else on this this tray because they just needed a little bit more time. I'm going to separate them out here um, because I'm going to chop those to add separately. I'm using red onion here. You could use white onion if you want to, but we do have to peel the garlic, that papery skin off of it. I like to leave it on when I'm roasting under a broiler like this, just simply because it protects the garlic from getting too dark. Um, but then you can just put that right directly into the blender jar uh, where we're going to collect everything else. Now, if the tomatillos have given off a fair amount of juice, which probably will happen, you don't want to leave that on the tray because the juice is like one of the most delicious parts of all of this. And if you have forgotten to take the stem off of your little green chili, you'll want to take it off now because you don't want to put that in there as well. I did mine earlier. And then we've got these tomatillos that are going to go in here. And I put the, the foil on here because it does make for an easier cleanup here. You don't burn a lot of stuff onto your, to your uh, bake. Oops, I just lost all of my stuff from the garlic there. So we'll get all of that stuff back together here. And then we're gonna blend this, but I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt just to get it mixed in there very nicely. And I'm gonna add a half a cup of water to it because we're gonna need more liquid there than what we would get out of those roasted tomatillos. So I'm gonna go in with my, I just grabbed the quarter there, but the half a teaspoon of salt. It's gonna need a generous half teaspoon of salt, so we'll put that in there. And then we're gonna blend it to what I call a coarse puree, which just simply means that there'll be a little texture left. It's not gonna be completely smooth. Looks good to me. I can still see some pieces of tomatillo in there. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And now this part of it, I want to cut up into small pieces. Um, you want them to be a little bit smaller than those pieces of the, the cheese are because the cheese will lose a little bit of its size as we're working here. And this will add not only that depth of flavor that you get, from the roasting of the onion, but it'll also add a nice little, I won't call it a crunch, but it'll add some nice texture to it. We're gonna leave all of that there. Now our next thing to do here is to heat this pan, and I'm gonna do it over about what I would call a medium high heat, um, and I'm gonna film it with olive oil. This will take a couple of tablespoons of olive oil because you really want to sear this cheese. And I'm gonna dry off surface moisture from the cheese here um, because these are fresh cheeses and they will have a fair amount of surface moisture on them you'll notice that they will brown slightly different. The, the, differently, the, um, the queso fresco versus the panela cheese. So we'll just fold the edges in so that we can pat off that surface moisture. That'll help it to, to brown nicely. So we've got that right. I think that this needs just a minute more. It doesn't feel quite hot enough here. Now, I have a confession to make. Um, I have taken 
two recipes and kind of put them together. In Oaxaca, they sear the cheese, usually queso fresco, um, and then put a tomato sauce that is seasoned with the chile pasilla oaxaqueño, the smoky oaxaqueño chili. Um, and I love that. And it's a typical, what they would call almuerzo, late, late morning uh, breakfast kind of dish. Um, and in the central part of Mexico, around Guadalajara, where the panela cheese is very popular, they will just warm up the salsa verde and throw unseared cheese into that and serve it as a kind of appetizer. Everybody takes it out. I'm going to show you a really cool thing that you could do with that. Um, but... I have taken the seared cheese from Oaxaca and blended it with the salsa verde from the west central section of Mexico and made this thing because I like those things coming together. The tanginess of salsa verde and the browned quality that you get out of putting the cheese, like I'm going to do right now, into the hot oil and browning it. So we'll lay that in there. We want a pretty flat layer here. I'm doing it in a non-stick skillet. Um, that would be what I would recommend it to you. Shake it a little bit so that you get it all, everything on in one layer there. And then we're gonna let it brown kind of undisturbed for a couple of minutes. And then we'll come in with a spatula. Um, I have a non-stick spatula here that I'm gonna go in, but if it doesn't, work very well, like if it's sort of sticky a little bit. I'm gonna use this one, but I'm gonna use it very carefully so as not to hurt the surface of the pan. Okay, everything really came uh, free easily, so I'm using the, the non-stick spatula here. You can look at that beautiful color that is on there. And the smell, of course, is that beautiful cheese smell, okay? So now is the time that we're going to put the salsa verde in on top of this. And then we're going to also, at the same time, put those roasted red onions on there. So there's our roasted tomatillo salsa. Now our onions go over that. All we have to do is to bring that to a simmer and then we will check for seasoning. So I kind of go in here gently because I don't want to... You'll, you'll notice that these pieces of cheese have softened, but they don't really melt. They just soften a little bit. Look at that, though. Doesn't that look just utterly delicious? Now, give it a taste at this point. We've got everything all mixed together here. Um, and I will see if I need to add just a pinch of much more salt or a little bit of sugar to balance the natural acidity that you get from the tomatillos. Mm. Yep, so I'm going to put just a little bit of salt on there. The tomatillos have a fair amount of acidity, so now I'm going to put that. Just a sprinkling of, of sugar. And the last thing is that is just seasoning together and coming to a full boil is to put a nice handful of cilantro in there. So we'll get this out there so that we can do that folding under of the top part of the, the cilantro. And then making that chiffonade, that very thin slice as we move down the stems. But just keeping everything kind of bunched up here. And this freshness is very much welcome in this dish, which has a fair amount of richness from the cheese. Okay. Got a nice amount there. Get rid of the stems there. Sprinkle that over the top of it. I'm going to use the spatula again to give it one last stir. But when I do this dish, I always like to just set this skillet right in the middle of the table, put some warm tortillas out, which I have here, and let everybody help themselves. But if you're in the west central part of Mexico, then you will see it served this way an awful lot. So I have a molcajete that I have heated up here over um, a fire for 
a little bed. It's sort of a medium low heat, so I put it over there so it would heat up. And this can be a vessel that you use to keep this all warm, whereas it would continue to cool off in the skillet. But you would just scoop it into that skillet. I'll grab a big spoon here and show you what I mean about that. And it'll sizzle some when it goes in there. And then you just scoop it all in. And you have your fresh cheese, queso fresco or panela cheese simmering away in that molcajete. Put out some warm corn tortillas and make a beautiful taco. And I'll tell you, it's delicious.